Hey everyone, this is an overview and review of the Mauritania task diaries. I still switch them up between tasks and diaries. I suppose they're officially called tasks now, but I still remember them as diaries, so I'll probably be calling them either one during this. So first of all, the, uh, the diary rewards you with the leg set of the task armor, and the legs are equivalent to different types of range traps. For the easy diaries, it's equivalent to leather, medium is snakeskin, hard is blue uh, dragonhide, and elite is the red dragonhide traps. So not all that great, but no one really uses that stuff for combat anyway. The experience rewards are pretty decent. Overall, it's 174k experience for everything, and there's also a 15k bonus experience lamp for completing the event within the first two weeks, I believe. That's for com completing the medium diaries within the first two weeks. Uh, so that's pretty good experience. Diaries are usually a good experience like this. Um, as for the rewards, I think there are some that are definitely worth getting. I'm only going to list the ones that are actually useful for most people. There are some little ones, and I've got all of this listed in the description as well as pictures of the new legs. But uh, yeah, take a look at that if you want to see everything. I'm just going to highlight some. For the easy rewards, the best one by far is having the bloom produce double the amount of fungus that it normally would which is used for making super energy potions. I know some people do that for making money. That's also really good. And yeah, double the fungus is pretty amazing. For the medium rewards, you can get free planks daily from Rasmir, which might be good. I don't know the amounts, but that's worth looking into. The main one though is making cannonball smith twice as fast in Port Phasmatis, which is pretty amazing considering that cannonballs are among the only profitable ways of training smithing at any decent experience per hour, although I guess they're not really all that decent. Um, but yeah, twice as fast is somewhere around 22k experience per hour, and I believe about 6k cannonballs per hour, which is pretty impressive. And yeah, that's a good money maker now as well. The hard rewards, the uh, main one, well, the main few are all ghosts will talk to you without needing ghost beak amulet. It's not really a big advantage, but it is convenient. Prayer drain while doing barrows is halved, which is nice for people doing barrows. I don't really do barrows, but that is pretty significant. You get double the runes as a reward from the barrows chest, which will really add up. I know you get a lot of bloods and deaths and mined runes, although I guess mines aren't that expensive. And then one that I isn't all that amazing, but I sort of like it, is 50% chance of keeping the blood altar tally tabs when using them. So if you're using blood tabs to get to things like uh, Bloodveld Slayer tasks. It's just a nice little convenient thing. And then finally, the elite rewards. You get a 20% chance of creating 4-dose prayer renewals instead of 3-dose when making them in Mauritania. And you also get 10% more experience while in the Canifish Slayer Tower while on task. 10% more Slayer experience, sorry, not 10% everything. And you also get double the amount of mushrooms farmed from the Canifish patch. Oh, wow, okay, so yeah, also a 10% chance of getting a second blood rune for every single essence. So overall, yeah, they're, the hard and elite rewards are quite good, but the requirements for them are also quite high for the, for the elite rewards. I believe you need 96 fishing to do barehanded shark fishing. You also need to have completed Ritual of the Majorat to kill all of the Barrows brothers. You need to be able to, to make a uh, prayer renewal potion, which requires high farming and herb lore. And you also need to be able to craft blood runes, among other requirements. A lot of people have also been complaining about the requirement that you need to summon a ghast familiar, which requires you to finish temple tracking completely, which takes somewhere around 18 hours. But in my opinion, it's a good minigame, and it gives a lot of other rewards, including the construction set for 2.5% more construction experience, the lumberjack set for 2.5% more woodcutting experience, uh, it's yeah, and it's moderately amusing. So I don't really see why people are complaining so much about that. It's a mini game that people should do anyway. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, overall, yeah, I thought it was a nice task set. I was sort of annoyed with it because it took me like nine hours to do. Because first of all, I you have to plant two sets of mushrooms. You need to harvest a marshala mushroom, and you also need to harvest bittercat mushrooms. And bittercat mushrooms are supposed to grow within four hours, but 
Of course, I plant mine and two hours in they get diseased, so I cure them. And of course there's a bug where they just disappear if you cure them, so that was not fun. And then it took them six hours instead of four hours to grow. Um, and yeah, that's not nine hours total, but it, it was a lot. So that wasn't very nice, but I guess it could have been worse. Um, but yeah, I recommend doing these tasks. They've got some nice rewards. Uh, and yeah, also do temple tracking. I'm probably going to release a guide on uh, how to level your characters in temple tracking within the next day or two. So keep an eye out for that if you've got any questions. Um, yeah, and if you've got any other questions, feel free to ask them in the comments. Make sure to take a look at the screenshots that I've got in there. Um, although actually, if you've watched the whole video, there won't be really much point in watching or looking at the screenshots, so no need to do that. But anyway, thanks for watching. That's everything.